And this is a film um, which uh, I made in 1985. It was based on um, a sort of true story of um, uh, Sid Vicious and uh, Nancy Spongen, who was uh, for a couple of semesters an alumnus of this, or, or a student at this very university. Six months. Six months, at least six months. Um, I think she was, well, you could probably get, well, if you've seen the film, you've probably guessed what she talked about. There was like three kind of strong art direction, like lots of metal you know, posters and walls and things like that. How much of that um, was kind of your set design and your character, and how much did you kind of specifically say, I want that thing, I want that thing? Um, it was a combination of the two, because there's actually there's two art directors, or there's two sets of art directors in the film. The English production designer was Andrew McAlpine, uh, who also did the art direction and design of Straight to Hell. And the American uh, production designer was by J. Ray Fox and Linda Burbank, who, who had done Repo Man. So, and where their, where their, so their talents merged is when we're doing scenes which were shot partially in England and partially in the States. And so they, you know, they really had to have a shared aesthetic, which of course I shared as well. Um, so I was, yeah, I was very involved in them, but at the same time I would kind of give them, you know, what my thoughts were, and then they would go and do it. The film got made because there was a rumor, more than a rumor, there was a plan by the studios. The studios, for some reason, were very keen to promote the career of Madonna. Then as now, for some reason, you know, Madonna's a film director now, right? Um, so for some reason, a film had already been green lit by a studio uh, to star Madonna and Rupert Everett as Sid and Liz. And, and so we really got into it just to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what happened. We just thought we couldn't stand it. You know, the thought of it. There's a thought of the whole punk movement. It's not meant, Sid Vicious, this film is not meant as an example of a perfect punk the movement should have gone. I mean, the scene where, where Cy Richardson, who plays the methadone dispenser, tells them, you guys have completely betrayed what you're supposed to be involved in here. You know, that was the point of the film. And it doesn't come across. The film fails. The film fails. Um, but that was still our intention. And yet we fall into this trap. Um, which, you know Donald Ritchie? You know who Donald Ritchie is? Very important independent filmmaker. He wrote the biography of, of Kurosawa. Uh, he was Kurosawa's friend. Kurosawa's closest, best friend. Um, and Donald Ritchie, when we were talking to him about um, Kurosawa's film, and about Kurosawa's last film, Manadayo, um, what uh, Donald Ritchie said about Manadayo is, it's sentimentality, and sentimentality is unearned emotion. And that's the problem with this film, is it's unearned emotion. It gives you like all of this kind of ironic and sentimental stuff, like the big cake that you can eat and go and out feeling like, oh yeah, you know. But really, it's a very sentimental. And, 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 and for me, a very unsuccessful film. My experience with punk rock movement was in Los Angeles. Because I went to the States in 77, 78, and so I missed. I mean, I was at film school in Bristol in England in 76, 77. So I was aware of the, um, the punk rock movement because we had a band in Bristol called the Cortinas. And I saw a guy in 1976 or 77 walking down the street with 1977 written on his back. And I thought that was really important. I thought they were onto something. So because of that, and then later when I heard Pretty Vacant and I heard the Sex Pistols and Clash, I thought they really are on this. This is a good movement, you know. But I viewed it as, as I think, Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood and Joe Strummer and John Lydon, I think they all viewed it as a revolutionary movement which was supposed to bring down the government and create a new and radical and improved regime in the same way as Bumal and Dali in the early days of surrealist movement thought that that was what that was all about. And in both cases, it turned into just a way of selling product and making money, you know. And 
so in that sense, just as Buñuel says in his autobiography, you know, our intentions were excellent, but we entirely failed.